Welcome back to Season 2 of the Discount Property Investor Podcast. Our mission is to share with you what we have learned from our experience and the experience of others to help you make more money investing like a pro. We want to teach you how to create wealth by investing in real estate the Discount Property Investor way. Make sure you never miss an episode and download the Discount Property Investor app in Google Play or iTunes today. To jumpstart your real estate investing career, visit FreeWholesaleCourse.com, the most complete free course on wholesaling real estate ever. Thanks for tuning in. I love it. All right, guys. Welcome back to the Discount Property Investor Podcast. This is your host, David Dodge. I am actually going to be co-hosting this episode with a good friend of mine, Brian Tripp. Hey, Brian. What's up, man? How are you? Excited to be here. Awesome. I'm excited to have you. Brian's not even our guest today. He's just a guest co-host. We're going to have fun on this episode, guys. Today, I'm bringing Brent Daniels to the podcast. Brent is a good friend of mine, a personal friend. We met in Mexico a couple of months ago at a mastermind. If you're not involved in mastermind events, check them out. It doesn't even matter which one it is. There's lots of, of gold nuggets to be had from those and people to meet. And again, that's where I met Brent. I'm happy to call Brent a friend today. Brent is with Wholesaling Inc. And he has a program called TTP. I'm going to let Brent explain what TTP is and how you can connect with Brent. He's also a coach, a mentor, a rock star, a real estate investor, a wholesaler. I mean, this guy does everything. He is freaking awesome. Brent Daniels, welcome to the show. Thank you, thank you. Look at this, Brian and David in the awesome. same room. You guys, have, you guys have opposing earbuds in. You guys know what TTP means. It means fuck two people. That's exactly what it is. This business is very, very, very simple. When it comes to sourcing opportunities, when it comes to being in the driver's seat, whether you want to wholesale, whether you want to flip, whether you want to build a rental portfolio, if you source the deals, you win. You get to choose what you want to do, and it's, it's as simple as this. The key to all of it is to have quality conversations with distressed property owners. Now, you have, the, you have three choices in there. You can wait for them to call you, right? You can just get referrals. You can market to them where you're spending money and you're buying those leads to call you, or you could be proactive you could pick up the phone, you could get accurate phone numbers for distressed property owners, and you could call them up and you could ask them if they consider an offer on their property. Woo! That's what I'm Woo! talking about. I love it. <laughs> Brent, tell me, uh, what is TTP? Let's start there. What, what, what is sure. TTP? What does that even mean? So talk to people, right? Very, very, very simple. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a very simple philosophy. I think in real estate, there are so many different things that we can learn, so much education we can do, so many books written on it, so many different strategies. But when it comes down, yeah, wholesaling, when it comes down to, uh, like I said before, sourcing the deal, it all comes down to just talking to people. So you have to, you have, to have enough self-awareness to understand if you want that to be a proactive activity or if you want to wait for those calls to come into you. So TTP is a program that I put together that teaches real estate entrepreneurs around the country how to pick up the phone, be proactive, and get the biggest, best leads and deals on planet Earth. So you have a program that you, that you, that you offer people that teaches them how to get leads, and, it, and this program is all based around cold calling, correct? Correct, correct, yeah. Okay. Phone, phone, phone prospecting, 100%. Phone yeah, prospecting is a better way to word it, being right? Being able to uh, set a schedule where you time block and you're having conversations with distressed property owners on your schedule. Got it, okay. So whenever somebody comes to you and they join your program and they know nothing about real estate investing, they've never talked to a motivated seller, they've never done a wholesale deal, is that all right? Is that what you're looking for? Or uh, typically, typically the, the people that come into the program have done some deals, typically. Uh, okay. If they haven't done any deals, they've got like a mentor, a local mentor that teaches them how, or they're kind of like bird dogs for other people. So they have some experience because it's definitely an advanced course. I'm not gonna teach you how to like step-by-step. Step. Basically, all you have to do is Read this book right here. It's the number yeah, there you one go. book. There you, go. <laughs> you read this book right here, and uh, and then you join the TTP program to find the, and source the deals, which you talk about in your book, actually, which is awesome. you know having those yeah. conversations. 
Absolutely. And I, and I appreciate you giving me a plug about the, my book, The Ultimate Guide to Wholesale and Real Estate. If you haven't picked this up yet, check it out. It's available on Amazon. Um, and I know that you're affiliated with Wholesale Inc. Like you're, like, like, let's start with this website. How, do they, how would somebody find you, Brent? It's wholesalingink.com forward, forward slash, slash TTP. Yeah. Okay, that's yeah. what I thought. I just wanted to verify that. Wholesale so, Inc. I would imagine uh, that a lot of your students or a lot of the people that join up, they're probably already in the Wholesale Inc. program, right? 100%. Not necessarily, but most of them would be, right? Yeah. Then they yep. join yours. You have more of an advanced course, and you teach people um, how to – what was, what did he say? Phone prospecting. Phone prospecting. I love that. So, <laughs> so look, look, I want to give my audience and my viewers just a little taste. So as you know, I'm an experienced wholesaler. I've done 300-plus deals. I wouldn't say I'm on the Brent Daniels or the Brian Tripp level yet, but I'm getting there. Thank you very yeah, much. Yeah, you are. Yeah, you are. <laughs> and, um, but anyway, like if I were to take your course, or if I were to sign up, like, uh, you know, show us a little bit or tell us a little bit about what you do with these, with these people, how you can get them going, and like some of, the, some of the strategies, you know, throw a couple of gold nuggets at me uh, of like what you're doing that's different than other people and how people can benefit from your program. Sure. Well, I, I, think it's, I think it boils down to a couple different things. One is, who do you talk to? Who is the most likely person to sell at a discount? Who's likely to trade speed convenience for equity in their property, right? Let's so repeat that real quick. Speed and convenience for equity in their property. Yep. I don't mean to interrupt you, but I love these little gold nuggets. So that's all that we're doing in wholesale. Wouldn't you agree, Brian? That's all we're doing. We are trading speed Inconvenience for what? For equity. For equity. Because we're never going to win on price, right? Right. So I don't mean to interrupt you, but again, I have a lot of people that listen and watch my, my channel and my podcast that they're really new. So I want to be able to emphasize some of these topics. Brent, go ahead. Yep. Yeah. So just imagine that you can pull lists of people that have, that somehow their hand is raised on some level of distress, right? So in every market, there's about six to 10% of the market that is in some sort of distress, whether that be a foreclosure or a tax default, uh, uh, that they can't take care of the property anymore because of their age, or maybe they, they, they physically can't take care of it anymore. Maybe they inherit a property. Maybe there was a rental that was destroyed by tenants over the years. Whatever it is, maybe they're just tired of it. There's a lot of reasons for distress, and you can find and target those people. So we show you how to find those people. And then second, the most amazing thing is right now, because of technology, you can do something called skip trace and get the actual phone numbers for these distressed property owners. So you've got their address, you've got their name, you've got your, their phone number. So the next thing is people can do Brent, stop right there. I got to yep. pause. Okay. So we're gonna run through this kind of in real time. So in my market, I'm in St. Louis. I'm lucky enough to have Brian from Birmingham visiting me in my market today. He's actually here for another event, but he wanted to come say hi and I wanna thank him for that. So in St. Louis, I have 2.8 million people in my metro. Okay, everyone's gonna be in different markets for the most part. Uh, we do have a lot of St. Louis people here, but 2.8 million. So you said how many people, what percentage are distressed? Six to ten percent, depending on the market. In your market, it's probably closer to six. Two point eight, right? So we're gonna say point zero six. Is that right, Brian? Help me out here. Looks right. So, so remember, this is property owners, that. not population. <laughs> so we, right. we got to see how many how many properties there are in your market. Right there. Okay. Times point zero six. Yep. Okay. So it's based on properties, but based upon the six percent rule, though, that means we have a hundred and sixty-eight thousand. Motivate, or not necessarily motivated, but distressed people or properties? Well, you got to see how many properties are in your market. So Phoenix, you can, you, there's 500,000 houses. You know what I mean? A million houses, a million properties. You know what I mean? So you times it by the properties, not necessarily by the population, because not everybody owns property. Right? No, that's a, that's a great point. That's a really great so point. So you got to figure in my market, there's anywhere from like, Forty to 60,000 houses that are in some sort of distress. Now, yeah, that's, that's what I'm trying to get to, man. So yeah. I just say that 10% of everyone in my city, I'm just guessing here, owns a house. That puts me at 280,000 houses. So if I take that and times that by 0 0.06, that's 16,800. Now, one point that I want to really emphasize is, is that's at any given time. 
That's not, it's not like there's 16,800 mm -hmm. stressed properties. And once I go buy all 16,800 of them, there's no more. Right. Every day, there's 16,000. It's a conveyor belt. It's, it's a conveyor it's an belt. Of course. But it's a conveyor yep. belt. So again, I just want to emphasize some of the points that you're making because I totally 100% agree with you. I think Brian can, can attest to that. Okay, cool. So well, and I, think, I think that also comes into a, an interesting point where people say, well, there's too many people in my market. Everybody's doing wholesale. Everybody's doing real estate investing. Okay. So what does that mean? I guarantee you if you did 20 deals this year, your life has changed. If you do 50 deals out of what do we say, 20,000, 16,000, you're not even at 1% of the market. Right? Like, there is plenty of opportunity out there. It's just whether or not you're going to talk to a distressed property owner today or not. I <laughs> love that. Awesome. Isn't that awesome? That's, that's some good content right there. Okay. So, in my market, you know, the 6% ish rule, that's so, that's more houses that I could ever see in probably my lifetime. I don't know if I could ever even hit 16,000. Maybe I could. I guess I probably could. I've done 300 deals at this point, but still, the number is so large. I want to really emphasize that because what this really means to me is that I don't really like, I don't look at anybody in my market as competition, right? So we were talking, we just went and had lunch. We talked about a couple of the people in my market that are doing deals that Brian and I both know. And I look at all of them as strategic partners. A, I don't have the scarcity mindset, but even if I show up to an appointment and somebody else is there, you know, I don't, it doesn't affect me because I know that there's 16,800 other opportunities out there. I love that. So anybody that's listening, all my listeners, all my viewers, you know, do not be deterred by competition in this business. Turn them into strategic partners if you haven't already. Okay. And go ahead. Yeah. I just want to add to that. Like, I think some people think that just because I got a house, that means there's one less house out there. No. And it, it could not be further from the truth. A lot of times that what we're doing, what you're doing, Brent, what we're doing, when we're sourcing these deals, we're talking to people that no one else would have even talked to. We're, to, we're, getting, we're getting deals potentially. We're getting leads that people wouldn't even normally even get because we're, we're doing it so creatively. Correct. Yep. yep. I love that. I yeah. love that. So, Brent, back to you. I'm sorry to get sidetracked, but there's lots of, the, lots of good content here and the good information and gold nuggets that I just want to reemphasize and reiterate just because the people that are listening to these podcasts oftentimes they're new people they're, they're new to the business and they don't know so there's tons of deals we've kind of covered that so tell let's jump back into ttp yeah so first you get a list so now you have all the information you do something called skip tracing which you you get their phone numbers if you need a resource for that i use uh, batch skip tracing.com if you use ttp as a code you get that for 18 cents an address so you get a TTP list of these properties. Say that again. TTP is the code. Yeah, for batchskiptracing.com, spelled out. And um, yeah, you get their phone numbers, and then you pick up the phone. The next point is, well, what what the hell do you say to them, right? So after <laughs> thousands of calls, hundreds of thousands of calls, millions of calls, we determined that. Uh, we, we put together the, the, the golden script, the best script, the TTP script for, um, for reaching out and talking to these distressed property owners. And here, here's the thing, and it was something that I mentioned at Brian's uh, um, REI Live uh, last week, is you have four seconds. This is, this is critical. You have the first four seconds to get the next 30 seconds in a cold call, in a phone prospecting call, when you're talking to a stranger. So the first oh, four you're seconds. You're telling me that you only get four seconds? Yeah. The, for example, if I call up and I ask for Mr. Dodge, you're going to assume that I'm either selling something or customer service. True. But if I call up and just say, hey, I'm looking for David, it almost kind of sounds like we know each other. You're like, oh, it does. This, right? And then you get going on it. So it's just little, little tips and tricks that over a lot of experience uh, we put together into the TTP script. And uh, if anybody wants that, they can email me at brent at wholesalinginc.com and I'll send that over to you. But anyway, so now you have, you have the who, now you have what to say to them, and then from there, you just have to understand that when you ask somebody if they consider an offer on their property, they only give you six responses, David. Six. That's it? That's only That's six? It. That is it. Some form of these six. Yes, no, maybe in the future, how much will you give me, 
how did you get my number and who are you? That's it. That's, <laughs> that's it. Only I mean, that's it all up. It does. Okay. That's it. So you get one form of that, and as long as you know how to respond to those responses, then you can keep the conversation going or move on to the next one. So Man, it's simple. This, this is an easy business. As long as you have quality conversations with distressed property owners, you cannot lose in this business. You can't. Yeah. Go ahead, please. No, you're co-hosting. I want, to, I want to ask a question. You're Brent. co-hosting, man. Yeah. So, so Brent, you've, you've given us some really good theory, and I think it's really awesome stuff. I want to dig in and get to, to some actual like granular, granular stuff. Is that cool? Let's go. Some, let's get into some detail. So you, you said we got to get a list. We got to, got to figure out who we're going to talk to first, right? So how do we get a list? What list should we get? What, what different, like, what, how do we even get our hands on this? I know you said we, once we get it, we skip trace it, we do all these things. How do we get our hands on this list? What list should we be getting? Well, the easiest and, well, the easiest way and the first list that you should get is a driving for dollars list in your marketplace. Especially if you're starting out, the driving for dollars <laughs> list is number one because every single person on that list is stressed. If that property is beat up, if it needs some love, you need to be talking to them right now. Okay. Now so you're that, suggesting that, that you're suggesting that people do their own driving for dollars, correct? Yeah, I mean, if you have a budget to hire somebody, or if you're charming enough to get people to do it for free for you, go for it. You know what I mean? But if you're out there and you're starting out, get some boots on the ground. Go and get some experience. See what's going on with these properties and neighborhoods. You, when you're driving in a neighborhood and you're starting out, all of a sudden you see remodels happening all over in certain areas, you know that's a popular place to go. You know that there's going to be cash buyers or people flipping in that area and it's, and it's being successful. So you go after the properties I and mean, you get out there and kind of get a feel for your market. Uh, if you don't, if you want to do it virtually, I totally get it. You just have to hire somebody that's going to you know, make those uh, drive. You know, We get our list from listsource.com. List source you can pull up. You could pull up all the multifamily, all the vacant land, all the um, rental properties. Um, so there's a, there's a few different resources. I like getting niche lists at flipthisrealestatelist.com. Uh, it's a Flip little bit more expensive. Flipthisrealestatelist.com. I've never list. heard of that one. Yep. Okay. So one thing I do really like about the driving for dollars um is when you create your own list and there's a couple apps out there there's a driving for dollars app there's a deal machine app i uh, i've dabbled with both and i'm not really necessarily you know promoting either one to figure out what works for you and that could even be driving around with a notepad just writing down addresses but when you create your own list it's unique so i'm not saying that that particular property won't be on another list it could be on another absentee list or a high equity list or a vacant property list, so on and so forth. However, when you create your own list from driving for dollars, that particular list itself is unique to you and it has a lot of power. Go ahead, please. Uh, yeah, and then also, like, I, I really think that it, it really comes down to, because Brick, you just got them mentioning basically their free list that you can get, free, which is, it's, it's not, it's free in cost, but it's not free in time. Sure. And, what, and what I've found, because I coach too, and I know you coach, mm-hmm. we all coach. What I've found is people either have time or money. They usually don't have both. Right. So, so the people that have time, spend your time getting lists basically for free, the driving for dollars list. But you, if you have money, Brent gave us some great resources, flipthisrealestatelist.com, mm-hmm. list source, where we can actually go and buy lists. Love it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that was great. And to David's point, the harder the list is to get, the more custom it is, you know what I mean? Right. Like competition. Right. If, you can, if you can download a list from the internet, you're not the only one that's doing it, okay? Well, what I found in my market, obviously I'm in Birmingham, we're all in different markets, yeah, yeah. what I found is our best lists are Freedom of Information Act lists. Okay, so dig, dig into that for a minute. Brent, we got to share your time with Brian, because- I love it. Too. <laughs> I love it. So did, tell did me more about this. Yeah, so the, through the Freedom of Information Act, we're allowed to ask our local governments for anything. Okay. Right? It's a federal law, so you can actually ask the government for anything. And this is how we get and get eviction lists. This is how we can get um, lists. Like our Water shut off Code violations. Code violations. So water shutoffs is a great list if you can get it. In Birmingham, our water it's system hardy. is private. Oh, it's not so, so that doesn't work. So we can't get that there. Okay. But somebody may, who may be listening to this might be able to get I've heard that that's an incredible list from people. So ours but, is in St. Louis. It's not. 
it's not it's not it's public it's not private so, so we can't can. so you can. right but let me let me just add this one caveat before we i want because brent i want to ask you a question about this these lists can be very 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 difficult to get uh, because government agencies want to say oh it doesn't exist oh no we can't do that that's that's illegal they're going to give you so many excuses as to why you can't you guys want to know a secret real quick i'm going to interrupt okay. you i've okay. tried like five times to get lists in St. Louis with it and failed every time. So you weren't persistent enough and you weren't, I know, talking, I know you that. weren't talking to the right people. Right. So you got to talk to different people um, within the organization. And we've, we've even gone to the mayor. Wow. Gone as high as This the guy mayor knows how to get shit because, done. Because <laughs> a, we had someone tell us, we had someone tell us one time, oh, that's that's a federal law that doesn't apply to us. Right. Yeah. Oh, well, what do you mean? The federal law applies to everybody. Right. What are you talking about? <laughs> I want to get your take on this. What do you think about these uh, FOIA lists, these Freedom of Information Act lists? Uh, I don't. I don't mess with it at all. I don't go down there. I'm not as persistent as you. I go to flip this real estate list. He's got an army of VAs that scrape public data and get me code violations, evictions, tax defaults, like the whole deal. So you know, inherited probates, all those things. So I think that there's people way more creative than I am, right? And that's what I focus on. I focus on finding the people that I can partner with or pay for to get those lists for, for, for them. Now, do I agree with you 100%, Brian? Right? I 100% agree. If you go down there and get them yourself, you're going to have it a lot faster. You're going to probably have at least a week, if not two weeks, head start of everybody else. So certainly if you're in maybe a smaller market where there's not a lot of information, you got to jump on that yourself. Advice. So, and it, but it also comes down to time versus money as yep. well. You mm -hmm. know, and if you if you have a lot of time and you don't have a whole lot of money, then go do some of these boots on the ground, these guerrilla techniques. Go to the, your local uh, mm -hmm. government offices um, and your municip municipalities and get these lists. i um, drive for dollars list. But if you got money right now, let's start going ahead and flip this real estate. Yeah, I love that list source. Let's go ahead and let other people do the heavy lifting for us. I love it. That's awesome. So. So lots of lists, guys. We know that. There's, there's lists that you can create, driving for dollars, for example. Uh, there's lists that you can use the Freedom of Information Act to, to get. There's lists you can buy. So there's lots and lots of lists. But, Brian, you had talked about this briefly, but like, okay, so I get a list. And usually when you buy a list, it's an address, a first name, and a last name. If you're using list source or another one of these list providers and you search by different things like high equity or vacant, well, then it'll all obviously have a column to let you know that data. But typically, from my experience, correct me if I'm wrong, gentlemen, but it's a name and an address. So that's not necessarily enough unless your whole prerogative is just, just mail. Correct? You agree? Yeah, you get to so the then, next step. What's the so next then step? you have to skip trace. So Brent, tell us again about uh, how you skip trace, and then you had given us a code. Repeat that if you don't mind. Yeah, so all you do is... Typically, your lists are going to come in or you're going to format it into an Excel sheet, right? Some sort of list that either you mail to or whatever. But it's in Excel. You take your Excel. You upload it to this website, uh, batchskiptracing.com. TTP is the code, the coupon code. And then you get it back with the phone numbers. Boom. How long does it take? A couple hours. They have one that's instant, right? So it's really, really, really fast. And now you've got the phone numbers to be able to call these people. Now, a couple tips right off the bat. You want to get rid of all trusts. You want to get rid of all LLCs, anything that's owned by a corporation, because typically those addresses of the properties are not tied to a phone number of the actual owner of the LLC or trust. So right. get rid of all those so you're not you know, spending money and not getting any results for that. So you want to filter through your list. And then from there, you just you could either hand dial these people or you could put, plug them into a dialing system and, and press go. Man, that's awesome. So, so now that we've done that, getting back to the granular Let's side. Let's do it. Granular. Right. You, know, you mentioned that, that you have a very specific script on what to say. Now we got yeah. all these phone numbers. We enter them into a dialer. Ring, ring, ring. What do we say, Brent? <laughs> that's right. I am looking for Brian. You got Brian. What's up? How can I help yeah, you? Hi, Brian. My name is Brent. I know this call is completely out of the blue, but I was calling about a property I believe you own on 1212 West Camelback. That is, talk, Brent, off, off, the, off the role play for a second. Talk about what you just said right there. Really dissect what you just said, how you went right to the point, Great point. in four seconds. Love it. 
Yeah, so here, here's, the, here's what I've learned. One, you want to make sure that you introduce yourself and explain why you're calling really quickly. But you also don't want to sound like you know some secret information about these people and you're a stranger. It's creepy. It feels weird. It feels intrusive. So you want to call and you want to ask them about a property you believe they own, right? I believe you own this property. I'm not certain. I don't know for sure. But, you know, at least it should goes up that way, you know, that type of thing. So, and then they typically will say, so I introduce myself. I don't go into my full name. I don't go into, I'm Brent Daniels with Discount Property Investor. I was calling him, but you know what I mean? I got, I don't go through the whole title and the whole thing. Right. You don't need to. I want to get to the point. Remember, it's the first four seconds. So I want to get and explain to them why I'm calling. And then typically they say, yeah, what about it? Or why are you calling or whatever else. So, so let's let's pretend that that's what I just said. Yeah, what about yeah. it? What, how, what's our response? Yeah, I was actually just calling to see if you would consider an offer on your property there. Okay. Right? And and then what are and you said that there are a certain number of things that Yep, yes, no, maybe, how much will you give me? How'd you get my number and who are you? That's the only six responses, some form of that. Now, will people yell at you and cuss at you and hang up? Yeah, that's considered a no, okay? <laughs> that's, that's under the no heading. But honestly, what I find with my students, the, the hardest part is when people say yes. They're like, oh, now what do I say, right? Yeah, and that's, now what do we that's a great so then, I love you, it. You get into the benefits of it. Yes, Brian, just to let you know, we purchase properties completely cash. There's no real estate commissions. We pay all of the extra fees. And the best part is we buy these properties completely as is, so you don't need to put another cent into the property. So for an offer like that, how much would you take? And then we just keep going and get going. And what typically happens is, guys, and this is just normal, is typically people will be like, well, I don't know, or you tell me, or you call me, or all these other things. So then you you, you got you to gotta bring this conversation back to where you're asking the questions. Oh, I completely understand. Just so I can get you a good, solid offer. Have you done any major remodeling to your kitchen and bathrooms in the last five years? It's a super specific question that's going to watch them just blossom. They're just going to start talking to you about everything about the condition. Brent, you want to know, hopefully I can give you a gold nugget. Yeah. You want to know one of my favorite things to say on the phone to people to, to qualify, but also to kind of expand on what you're saying um, is I always say, what type of house is it? And it's such a broad, like some people will interpret that as ranch. Some people will interpret that as two story. Some people will interpret that as a POS. Mm -hmm. like a super nice one like they don't understand the question necessarily but it's a it's a question that puts the ball in their court and it's one of those things we were just saying at lunch you ask and then you just shut up but i always do that i always say you know so for instance if i was calling brent we had gotten through that first little spiel and there's like yeah you know I, I would be interested in an offer and i'd say great can you tell me what type of house it is and I love they, it. they start telling you well it's a two-story and it has six bedrooms and it needs work and I haven't done anything recently because my aunt's been living there and blah, 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 blah. But it's also, it also helps you get to why. And as Tom's, I just had Tom on like last week and he was, he was telling me, you know, and I, and I didn't realize that I was doing this. But if you can't get to why, ask when, and it'll usually un, unravel into their why. And yeah. I use that same strategy with what type. And, I, and if you don't interrupt or like let, just let them go. And then act like you're listening. Well, you should be listening, but you know, say, oh, great, you know, or yeah, oh, great, or oh, I, I hear you, or I, I agree. And then they're just going to keep telling you. So I love that, man. I just want to throw that out there. That's awesome. I love that question. That is fun. I really like that. What, what type? Because again, what type of property is it? Is the broadest question of all time. It's the broadest one. And, but a lot of times, Brent, it, it'll, it'll answer questions that I might even forget to ask. So, like in St. Louis, right? The big city, 2.8 million people in our metro. We obviously have public sewers and public water, right? But if you go 25 minutes away, and I would imagine it's similar in every city, they're going to be on septic and they're going to be on well. Well, I often forget to ask those questions. Is your property on septic? So if I just say what type, some people will go on for 20 minutes without me even getting a word. And well, it's out in the country and we have septic tanks and we haven't done this and that. And then, I mean, <laughs> they, just, they just go and go and I'm just sitting there taking notes. And by the time that they're done telling me the type of property, I know everything I need to know.
I love yeah. it. I, I want to talk about the psychology of that. Love it. Because I think that that, yes, asking these questions are really important. But for a new person, Brent, it might be, um, we may not know why we're getting this. We may not even know the information that we're getting and why it's important. But but I, I would think that the, the information is important, but what's more important is the psychology of it. You're getting someone to open up to you. And in sales, we all know in sales, people do business with people they know, like, and trust. They're getting yep. to know you correct? Mm -hmm. just by getting them to talk. Is that a part of it, Brent? 100%. That's 100% it. And the more, that they, the more that they feel comfortable opening up that conversation, the more that they're going to really explain to you if they're motivated or not, right? So you've got to pre-qualify all these leads. And, uh, you know, we pre-qualify them on four things. Condition of the property, timeline to sell, like you were saying, the when, right? Their motivation and the price they want. That's it. So if you're new... You just write down those four things and try to answer that question. What's the condition? When do they want their money? Why are they selling it? And what price do they want? If you line all those things up, then you know you so have to simple. And I, Man, you simplified it down to four things, and that's awesome. Because that's true. That's awesome. It is. Like when I first started this full time four, four and a half years ago, um, I was using scripts, which I highly recommend you use if you're new. And Brent has scripts that he offers people. Um, not only in this course, but you can email them, Brent at wholesalinginc.com, right? Yep. Awesome. Very cool. Value add. Um, we love that you that you offer that. But you know, it helps you get through those. But like now, like whenever I have a new student that comes on and he's like, "What script do you use?" I'm like, ah, "Script." But I have to take a step back and be like, "Man, if you don't know, you don't know." Yeah. Like my objective is to get those four things answered. You know, do, do you need to sell or do you want to sell? Right? How much? When and why? I mean, it's pretty simple. But if you're new, like, let's take a step back. A minute ago, you were saying when they say yes, right? You don't like, if you're new, like, you're like, whoa, I haven't had that because I've gotten 67 no's, right? So when I first started, I had hired a coach, local Joe McCall, good friend of mine as well. And he was like, I kept asking all these dumb questions. Like, what do I do? And he was like, David, just fail, just jump in. And that's not like his message, but he was like, who cares what you say? You know, just say something. And I realized that, you know, it, it had nothing to do with the content of like what was actually being said, but it was just the fact that I like would, would say it. Like I would get so nervous in the beginning when somebody would be like, yeah, I am interested in selling. And it's like, you're just, just act human. Just be, just be yourself. You know, yeah. say, Wait, you know, let's talk more about it. And sometimes I'll get on a call with the seller and it'll be a 35 minute phone call. I don't mind. You know, I'll make a friend out of it. Brent, talk about that. I want to talk about that for a second because I think that that's interesting. You, 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 get, you get newer people into your program. You have newer people who, who maybe they haven't talked to anyone. They've never made a cold call before in their life. Someone that might be watching this or listening to this podcast right now, what do you say to that person? Is it uh, just go a different route? Great question. Just do something different. Don't cold call. Or this is how we actually break out and, and be successful cold call. Well, first of all, the people that come into my program are proactive people. They're just naturally proactive. That's, that's the way that their brain's wired. That's the people that they are. They understand that if they can get people on the phone talking to them, they're going to be successful. So very rarely do I have anybody reach out that invests in the program that is like a true, like, I don't want to talk to anybody type of thing. So I think just... Just by just by the nature of the program, I think that these are pro these these are the most proactive people in real estate. Okay, um, but beyond that, if they've never made a call, you need to start small. Start with just a couple conversations. Start with making calls for fifteen minutes and stop. Take a walk around. That is huge. Come back. That is because right. if you try to, and that's another thing. When I first started, I sat down on a Saturday from like nine a.m. until like literally seven p.m. And I, had, and I had talked to 300 people, but I was burnt out. It took me a whole week. You probably hated it. And I hated it. But I, that, that is huge, Brent. Thanks for sharing that, man. That, that's one of the nuggets right there that I'm going to put in our show notes. But start small. But more importantly than that, I think, or I shouldn't say more importantly, but with that, is maintain that consistency, but yeah, start small. Well, and you, you build up, you build up your your uh, endurance for it, and I think you know, it, it, and and not to like promote, 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 but within the the TTP program, we have a private Facebook group, and there's a community there. 
You know what I mean? It's the TTP family. So people get to really connect and be involved. You know, we get into this business, we're on like little islands by ourselves, like you're saying. You're there Saturday morning by yourself, all those thoughts and fears and anxieties creep into your head. Well, when you can reach out and have somebody to talk to about that, that really helps it. It really does. So I think that that's part of it. I think starting off small, and I think you got to just stack the small wins, right? I got on the phone today. That's a win. I talked to somebody. That's a win. They yelled at me. That's a win. Somebody <laughs> twice, That's a win, right? Like all that's these little win. things add to wins, and that equals to the big success. So, you know, don't think that just getting a wire into your personal bank account or getting a check that you post on Facebook like the freaking cocky SOB that you are is the is the end game of this. It is all little, 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 little wins along the way. And then all of a sudden, it becomes second nature. I've got people that just stay on the phone. They just keep making calls, keep making calls. And at some point, they hit a massive deal. It's 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 just, right. you know, so that's... I that's think you it. just... You made a great point right there that most, I guess, newer people maybe haven't done a deal yet. They consider the win to be getting a check or getting yep. a flyer. Yep. And that's, that's a great and, point. And if you, if you have that mentality, you, I don't even know how you can even be successful and do your first deal. You right. have to count these little wins. And I love, Brent, I love that you said one of the wins is to get yelled at and, and to fail. And like almost to fail our way forward. I'm, I'm reading, I'm, I'm just got done with the, the slide edge, which I'm, I know like a lot of you guys have read. And where he talks about, you've got to, you've got to like mess up so many times. That's a part of it. It's the only way to success is to mess up. Yeah, yeah. fail, that's what I'm saying. When I had Joe as my coach. Like Joe provided me tremendous amounts of value. And this was like an eight week program that we had. And it was so funny. And I, and I like, I love Joe. He's like one of, he's one of my, well, a really good friend of mine at this point, but you know, I was just hitting him up every day with, well, what about this? What about that? And he literally, it was funny because it was kind of, I don't want to say rude, but it was, it was bold. And he's like, David, you're not allowed to ask me another question until you have an appointment set. At the time I didn't have any. And then I did it. And then I was like, Joe, guess what? I got an appointment. He was like, we can ask questions. Today. <laughs> and then I would ask him, what do I do on this appointment? And he'd be like, David, you're not allowed to ask me a question until you've ran 20 appointments. And then, but guess what I did? I went out and I ran 20 appointments. Yeah. But yeah, absolutely. Stacking and now I, I've done 300 wholesale deals, which isn't even that many when I compare myself to you two guys or other people. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, it's all about that A to B. But Brian, you said it great though. Whenever people are getting started, they're thinking, I need to get that paycheck. But it's like, you should count that as a win when you get, uh, yeah, you come out and see the home. Great. That's a total. You know, or whatever. Yeah, like Brent the, said that, yeah, or Brent said that. I'm sorry. But yeah, but each little step in the process is a huge win. I love that. I love that. Brent, let me ask you this. Um, off topic a little bit. It's about lists, though. But have you ever looked into the dissolved LLC list? So it's, essentially, it's a list of dissolved LLCs that own properties. You ever heard of I that? I don't because I don't call LLCs because they don't have phone numbers attached to them. So, I mean, okay. maybe for a different marketing channel. I'll give you one, though. You want to you find – Google somebody. This is great because I've done literally $104,000 in the last six months off of this one referral that I got from talking to one guy, my, my acquisition engine. Find a firefighter, okay? <laughs> listen, to me, listen to me. An active firefighter that has a real estate license. I am telling you, we have an active firefighter with a real estate license that brings every single fire property because they have some access to it. Oh, they bring it to he bring it to me so that he gets a commission on it, right? He sells them, no problem. Things go smooth as can be. I mean, it has been unbelievable. Huge deals, huge deals from you could probably just Google it, right? Find somebody that's on Realtor that says firefighter or something. Whatever it is, because you will find somebody that one knows the real estate business and two doesn't want to mess around. Doesn't have uh, they have a full time firefighting job. They want these easy deals. Yeah, sometimes. they're not into it to try to be in, in it in every part of it. They just want to tee you up and get out of the way, and then you'll get it done and they get paid. I love it. Another thing that I want to mention too is like buying the probate list or the eviction lists are great. Lots of value there. We do deals off of them. I'm sure you do too. But don't discount the attorneys. Mm -hmm. you know, we network with the probate attorneys and the eviction attorneys because, you know, we're trying to hit people from all sides, of course, with, with, with touching them, you know. However, oftentimes people will go 
to their eviction attorney and be like, I just want to get this person out so I can sell it. Well, if they know that I'm going to buy houses, you know, I'm not going to wait for them to get a letter from me. I'm just going to have Richard, my eviction attorney, send them straight to me. Same thing with probate. Probate's a little bit more difficult, but yeah. if you get in and network with those attorneys, they will send you leads. And they only have to be licensed real estate agents. I'll just send them a gift card for 500 bucks. doesn't matter. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Property managers, I mean, people that, people that are in real estate that, that, that have people that want to sell quickly. I mean, property managers are great. Talking to people doesn't mean just picking up the phone and calling uh, distressed properties, 100%. distressed property owners. It just, it's talking to everybody, man. Yeah. Right. Talk to all the professionals in, the, in it. You know what I mean? Talk to the attorneys. Talk to the property managers. Talk to the real – we get so many referrals from realtors that just – you tell, you tell them that you wholesale. You explain to them what wholesale is. Their eyes glaze over. And they don't care. They only want to get a commission and just forget about it. It's incredible. Mm -hmm. It's incredible. So, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's just a simple philosophy. It's awesome. Brent, thanks for coming on. I love your energy. I, I love following you and, and seeing all the great content you put out. You have a YouTube channel. Tell us a little yeah. bit about that real quick. Yeah, just Brent Daniels. I had the pleasure of just being on there like last week. So thanks for I know, awesome. I know. Brent Daniels Real Estate, Just you could just uh, Google that or look at it in YouTube. Uh, the Wholesaling Inc. podcast is, uh, you know, you have David's featured on it here in the next couple of weeks. Brian's been on it a ton. I mean, it's just, uh, it's a phenomenal resource for everybody. And uh, Great content, in, love that. And getting personal coaching by me in the TTP program, then go to that wholesalinginc.com forward slash TTP. TTP. TTP in the house. That's what's and, up. And don't forget to get That's David right. Dodd's book, The Ultimate the Guide. The Ultimate Guide. Boom. Wilson Chris got a copy. That's right. I just now got my copy signed. Yes. I'm That's excited. right. That's right. I, I, I got the pages outlined and everything. Come I know. On. Look at that. Right. Hey, I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. I'm honored to have both of you guys on the awesome. podcast at one time. Brent, thanks for coming on. Brian, thanks for co-hosting today. Guys, I'm going to put, put all this awesome content, all these little gold nuggets. I know I've learned a couple things today just talking to these two uh, Goliaths here. But I'm going to put all the show notes together so you can, uh, you can see that. Brent, thanks again for coming on. Check out Brent. He's got a YouTube channel. He's got a podcast. He's got <laughs> all types of cool stuff. It'll be in the show notes. Anything you guys want to add? His Wrap Instagram's up. blowing up, guys. Seriously, that's get right. In touch with Brent. Brent is such a go getter. He's the man. He gives it all away. Definitely, don't take advantage. Take advantage. You've got a guy right here that's giving away this unbelievable book. You've got a guy right here who's who's giving away. He just came and spoke at our RIA meeting. I saw and, that. And Neat. literally gave away the keys to the kingdom. He he told broke it down in every single way. And we're going to post that video. We'll post that video for, for your audience as well. Sure, yeah. Uh, of Brent. Guys, these are two go-givers. Make sure you get in connection with them and make sure you watch their content. That's right. Because everything you need to be successful. Yeah, yeah we give, try to, give try to it give it away. Guys. Absolutely. Well, let's wrap up, guys. If you haven't taken the free wholesale course, check it out. Freewholesalecourse.com. Doesn't get any easier than that. And I was actually just looking on my phone last night. I typed it in and I had like, no keywords, no description, no nothing. If you Google it, and actually probably right this second still, it just says free wholesale course. We've already had over 4,000 people take the course and over 100 five-star reviews. It's awesome. It's free. So check it out, freewholesalecourse.com. Um, as uh, Brian just mentioned, we just published our first book. And, hey, there's going to be many, many more where that came from. But the ultimate guide to wholesale and real estate, check it out. It's on Amazon. Brent. Thank you for coming on. Brian, thanks for co-hosting. Until next time, guys, we're signing off. Thanks for listening to the Discount Property Investor Podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, please like, share, and subscribe to help us reach a wider audience. To jumpstart your real estate investing career, please visit freewholesalecourse.com, the most complete free course on wholesaling real estate ever. We would also appreciate it if you left us a review on iTunes or Stitcher. Thank you in advance for your support. And remember, you make your money when you buy and you get paid when you sell. Now let's go build some wealth.